this past week. This past week was the three year anniversary of my wife's passing. 30 years we had been married. And she passed away. And I can say to you that those were deep, dark, lonesome days. And God has blessed in that God gave Jennifer. And Jennifer has been such a blessing to me. I thank God every day for Jennifer. And God sent others in that time frame and as the weeks and months went past to bring me comfort, strength, assurance. For God is always faithful. But in the midst of those days and weeks and months, God gave me a song. And more and more that song became true to me. I found that at the beginning, in those first few days, I often had to sing it with a clenched jaw through gritted teeth. But I was convinced that it was the song that he had given me. And so I chose to walk in that song. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace. To trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus. Sing that with me. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. You are going through deep valleys I would encourage you to trust him trust him with all of your heart he will be faithful to see you through if you'd like to if you have your scriptures turn to John chapter 1 we'll put it up here on the board for you but there's something about reading from the pages John chapter 1 verse 14 the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of uh, the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth would you say with me this morning full of grace and truth full of grace and truth amen John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about. When I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. 
All right, here we go. Grace in place of grace already given. Grace, come on, repeat after me. Grace after grace that has already been given. For the law was given through Moses. This is the crux. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you this morning for your grace. Thank you that through you, grace has come and that we can know grace, the grace of God as it is through you. I pray that you would open our hearts and our ears to hear from you this morning. Be glorified. Be glorified not only in the preaching of your word, Lord, but also in our response to it. Thank you for the privilege of being in your house this morning in your name. Amen. In these verses, we are introduced to a new concept. Although grace is spoken of and mentioned in the Old Testament, it is a new concept in Jesus Christ called the grace of God. The grace that was present in the Old Testament was a veil or a sheltered grace. Jesus came in a new and improved grace. The fullness of grace, now grace is defined as unmerited favor. In this case, the unmerited favor of God upon us, his creatures. Now there are instances, there were instances of the grace of God. In the Old Testament, it says, Noah found favor or grace in the eyes of the Lord. There are instances of those, but they are not of the same brand or, or intensity of grace as it came through Jesus Christ. John 1.14 explains that a new brand of grace has been revealed. For not only did Jesus display the glory of God, but he came full of grace and truth. He brought on an entirely new dispensation God's grace verse 17 we find Jesus is the instigator of grace and truth he is the author we understand and it expresses that Moses Moses may have given the law and Moses was a great man but Jesus Christ is the supplier of not only grace, but also truth. God's grace, God's truth. Now we are encouraged, I would encourage you, scripture encourages you to extend grace to those around you. That means to be kind. Even when they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Some people can be downright honored. But you should still give grace. As a child of God. Regardless of their appearance. To be a generous. Regardless of their decisions. It means we set aside those critical attitudes. That judgmentalness that we can so easily pick up. And decide to extend favor, not requiring them to earn it. There are times we're guilty of uh, forcing people to earn grace, but that's not grace if they're earning it. What would happen if God told you, All right, you earn what I'm going to give you? Oh, oh no, I don't like it then. Because I could never earn God's blessings in my life. I have to throw myself on God's grace. God, I'm not worthy. I, there's nothing I can do to earn it. I need God's grace in my life. Maybe you say, well, I, 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 I could never do that. I could never extend grace or be kind to those who don't deserve it. I find that it's not in me. Well, as a child of God, he expects that very thing of you. 
If we are going to be like Christ, it's a very fundamental aspect of God's nature. And I have to say amen to that, because without the grace of God in my life, I'm hopeless and helpless and lost and condemned. And so I say, Lord, develop grace in me. I throw myself on His grace, pleading with Him to develop in me grace. Lord, don't give me what I deserve, but rather, give me grace. For which of us are worthy of the blessings of God? Well, the answer is none of us. Are you worthy of the blessings of God? Well, yeah, you're pretty good people. But you're not worthy of God's blessings. Which of us have earned his favor? The answer is none of us. All depend upon the grace of God. Even for our salvation. Even for our salvation. Ephesians 2 tells us it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. It is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. In him. So yes, we do play a part, and we do have to believe in Him. We have to repent of our sin. All that's true. However, we must realize it is by the grace of God that we are saved. It is by the grace of God that we are saved. It is not of ourselves. It is not of our works. It is not a work. It's a result of the grace of God in our lives. Do we still have to believe? Yes. Yes. But our salvation is instigated by the grace of God. It is secured in your personal life by faith in Him. There are pilgrims I have heard, read about, that will crawl a hundred miles on their knees in an attempt to earn God's favor so that God or their God will give them grace or salvation. There are some who will deprive themselves of the very basic essentials of life in an attempt to earn God's favor. There are some that will do a lifetime of charitable work Give all, their, all they have to feed the poor. They'll house the homeless. They'll clothe the naked. Give their lives to the needy. But my friends, it's all for nothing without the grace of God. It's good work. You know, there's a lot of unsaved, unsaved people that do a lot of good work. But that work does not lead to salvation. God's grace put together with our faith. That's what leads to salvation. Then the works come. But don't ever put the works in front of the grace. Because works without grace, works without faith. Faith without works, none of it works. Apart from the grace of God, coupled with faith in Jesus Christ, it will result in nothing. It is only by the grace of God that we are saved. Why does Ephesians say that it's set up like that so that none of us can boast? None of us will be able to walk through heaven and say, well, I had giant faith. <laughs> and God couldn't help but put me into heaven because after all, I had giant faith. Get that out of here. You'll be in heaven because of the grace of God. Amen. Now, did you have faith? Well, yes. But even that comes from God. Grace was illustrated in the Garden of Eden as God killed an animal to provide a covering for the nakedness of Adam and Eve after they had sinned. 
You see, the plants they had used were not sufficient because God says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So God took an animal as a picture of what Jesus would do on the cross, and he sacrificed that animal and made clothing coverings for that. As a picture, as a symbol, is the first picture of salvation, of grace. The word of God to them had been in the day that you eat of the tree, in that day you will die. But God's grace, by God's grace, although they began the process of dying on that day, the redemption of God was able to cover their sin, their shame. It's a picture of God's redemption, God's grace. Would God have been justified in smacking them dead right there on the spot? Yes. He could have smacked them dead and said, you know what, I'm going to start all over again. He was not obligated to them. In fact, he had warned them, in the day you eat of that, you will die. And he would have been justified in killing them on the spot. Instead, his grace prevailed and he provided a way. We have a much greater way. We have been given the blood of Christ and by his blood we are not just covered. Our sins are cleansed. God's grace. In John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist declared when he saw Jesus coming toward him, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Not just covers them, but cleanses them, purifies us. That, my friends, is an example of the grace of God. It was by the grace of God that Jesus was conceived of the Virgin Mary, Born in a manger, lived, in the, lived a sinful, sinless life, and laid down his life as a sacrifice so that you and I might be saved. God's grace in our lives. Not by anything you have done, but because of his grace. He did this so that whosoever believes in him shall be saved. It's God's grace. Freely given. Now if this were the only thing that Jesus accomplished, that would be enough. It would be more than enough. In fact, if that's the only thing Jesus ever did, I would worship him throughout eternity. Saved me from eternal judgment. The truth that he has delivered me from hell. Won the victory over death in the grave. But God didn't stop there, for he has blessed us beyond the measure. He has added grace to grace, step to step, block upon block, measure upon measure. He has showered down his favor, his grace down upon us. Beyond saving us, he has forgiven us. Uh, you say, well, what's the difference between saving and forgiven? Oh, there's a huge difference. Saving means, you know, picture somebody out in the water and you throw them the life buoy. Bring them in. That's saving them from destruction. Forgiving is a different thing altogether. In fact, why don't you turn to, if you have your scriptures out, turn to Psalm 32. Psalm 32. It's a great psalm. David understood the gloriousness. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. Oh, 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 oh. Forgiven. That means that every time you approach God, he doesn't say, Do you remember when you did that and you offended me and you trespassed against me? No, he has forgiven that. The next phrase, whose sins are covered. Understand, he had an understand, a different understanding of grace than we do. 
He felt like his sins were covered. We can understand that our sins are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. John 1 just said that we have been given a better form of grace, a new and improved grace over what even David experienced. Sins are covered. No, oh, our sins are cleansed now, Mr. David. Check out this next one. The blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against him. If you have one of those King James versions, there's a fancy banking term in there called impute. Impute! It's a banking term. You know, the bank every month, they, when they come to your mortgage, they say, all right, you owe this much. And they impute, they do their, uh, their figure, and, and then they impute how much interest you owe. <laughs> how much interest do you owe? And then they very happily add that to your payment. It's true. Impute. Same term. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not impute against them. Now, if the bank sends you a note saying, we've decided not to count your interest. You owe no interest on your mortgage this month. You'd be going, Whee! How much greater is this truth? Happy or blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not impute against him. I am blessed. Praise God. Well, if God would impute, if he were to impute what we owe, how much would we owe how much would we, how much would you owe? How much would you owe if God imputed all your sins against you? Remembering that the wages of sin is, it would be devastating. More than any mortgage payment. It would be devastating if God imputed it, counted it against us. But according to the grace of God, Romans says, the gift of God is not death, it is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That, my friends, is grace. The great grace of God. Unarmed, unearned, however given freely through Him. So not only are we saved, but we're forgiven. God does not count our sin against us. We are restored to a proper relationship with Him. We can boldly approach the throne of grace as His children. We are reconciled to Him. We have not, we are no longer estranged from Him. We now can live in abundance of life. As the children of God, all because of the grace of God. Through grace, we have peace, comfort, strength, assurance. All these through God's grace, God's great grace in our lives. It is by His grace that we have now received the Holy Spirit. By God's grace, He resides in us. I'm sad to say that at times I must have been a very poor host. I have been the guest in homes that that the, the way I have been treated in those homes, the actions, the behaviors, the whole experience is icky. 
icky at best. And I am afraid that I am at times, and I'm sure that is true of you as well, it, the Holy Spirit, our responses, our attitudes, our rebellion, our disobedience, and he is appalled, icky. But according to his grace, he stays. And he works with us. And he convicts us. And he proceeds with us. And he doesn't grow weary of us. There have been times when I've been visiting someone and I instead intended to stay so long and I think I'll leave a little early. <laughs> Aren't you thankful that the Holy Spirit does not leave? The reason he does not leave is not that you're such a shining personality. It's because of his grace. He is committed to you. He is faithful to God's purposes in your life. And so he continues to reside. He guides. He convicts. He teaches. He works with us. And even though at some point he may say, oh. He still doesn't give up on us. You know, it's not because we deserve it. It's not because we've earned it. It's not because we're special. It's not because we're super spiritual. In fact, if you start to get the idea that you're super spiritual and that you're something, I have news for you. The Holy Spirit has even more work to do on you. A little something called humility. <laughs> Never allow the blessings of God in your life to serve, to develop a self-righteous attitude in you. We must strive to remember that all that we have, all that we are, is according to the grace of God in our lives. It's not glory to us, it's glory to Him. Don't allow an attitude of pride or an attitude of superiority over others. I am saved by the grace of God. Well, I'm forgiven. Well, yes, you are. But it's by the grace of God. You've been redeemed and restored and purchased with a price. Reconciled unto God. All because of the grace of God in your lives. Amen. Oh, that was pretty weak. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, that was weak. You are saved by the grace of God. Amen. Oh, thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning. I thank you this morning for your grace and your goodness and your love in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would cause us to cast ourselves on your grace. And thank you, Lord, that you have saved and that you have reconciled and that all the blessings of God are ours. But let that cause us to be humble in you. Lord, I pray that you would cause us to be willing servants of yours so that we might administer your grace to those around us, not being hindered with a spirit of pride or of self-righteousness. For our righteousness is as, as filthy rags before you. Rather, we want to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Would you stand with me, please?